Colin is going to provide another quick demo of SFTP usage and how it can protect your data. Over to you, Colin. Thanks, Tim. I would like to show you a JCL sample that uses native SFTP command syntax. I'm sure the first thing you will notice is how different the command syntax is from regular FTP command syntax. And as Tim mentioned, there may be some re-education required if this is the route that you intend to go. So, if your end goal is to convert your FTP batch jobs to SFTP command syntax, then this is probably what your batch jobs would look like. Bear in mind though, that could be a huge undertaking from a resources point of view. And there are other alternatives that Tim will discuss in our demo that could make converting your batch FTP batch jobs to SFTP much, much easier. So this is a sample that I plan to use and let me just point out in the STS environment, we are not making use of open SSH, but we are making use of the SSH tech tier product that is taking care of all of the SSH encryption for us. Okay, back to the sample. In this batch job, I'm invoking the SCP G3 program from the bin directory. Now, there are a lot of different operands that can be coded within this batch job, but I try to keep it as simple as possible. And also, time doesn't allow me to go into too many of the operands. The minus Q operand basically uh, turns off some of the verbose information within the batch job. In this batch job, I've chosen to use password authentication. So that's the dash dash password equals, and the password is stored for this user ID is stored within this file or this PDS. And it is stored in bcvr1, that's my user ID, dot password, dot sftp, dot sts. Password authentication method is the easiest to implement as it is set up by default. And since all communication is encrypted, passwords are not available for eavesdroppers. There are other forms of authentication, like server authentication with certificates is also supported, but the most popular form of authentication is user authentication with public keys in a file. There are automated procedures to accomplish user authentication with public keys by uploading the end user's public key and storing it in an authorized file. The file transfer advisor or FT advice string tells the tech tier zero SFTP server exactly how to process and handle the file transfer. It is a lot like the site command and the FT advice string works the same no matter what platform the client runs on. Tim mentioned some implementations of SSH have limitation when it comes to the handling of converting uh, data SSH tech tier does not have this limitation. And in my example, the FT advice string is instructing uh, the SSH to convert EPSIDIC data to ASCII as I'm sending from the mainframe to a Windows platform. The CRLF or carriage return line feed line delimiter, delimiters set by the I equals DOS operand are converted to line feed char characters. So that's the J equals MVS which are converted to new line characters in the code set conversion. One of the other limitations of OpenSSH implementations is the lack of native ZOS or MVS dataset support. My example that I'm showing you here at the moment is sending from the mainframe to a Windows platform, but let's assume I was sending from a Windows platform or Unix or Linux up to the mainframe. I could store the information that I'm sending up to the mainframe directly in an MVS dataset or ZOS dataset. There's no requirement to stage the dataset into a ZFS file system and then maybe use the OCopy command to copy it from the ZFS file system back into the Windows environment, uh, sorry, the, the ZOS environment. So this gives you a basic idea on SFTP and the associated command syntax. When using SFTP, your user ID and data are all encrypted. Although, as Tim mentioned, once it reaches its destination, the data is unsecured and it could be a free for all again. I will demonstrate to you later how perhaps using data at rest encryption or PGP could be another option to consider.